relationship and we uh it's like two uh, two friends from grammar school talking uh his name is jean propayant and he is uh just a, an excellent guy um we're going to be talking about how your content strategy can grow your audience and your business, uh, which seems like, yeah, of course it can. But uh, we get a masterclass from Jean in, in this episode. Uh, he talks about some really important things that you need to realize when creating your content and then some actions that you should take around your whole strategy. So a few things to look out for in this episode uh, first of all, he talks about uh, how to decide which channels to be on. So, you know, don't just be on everything, but be on the ones that um, that work best for you. Uh, how to pick a worthy goal and then how to come up with and execute a content strategy to grow your audience. He even uses me and my goals because he, he knows them. And so I, I get a little one-on-one -on -one consulting with Sean here. Uh, but uh, so I, I think you'll really enjoy this episode. Be sure to listen to the whole thing because it's really good. Uh, and thanks so much. So now let's get on with uh, my interview with Jean Perpignan. Hey, everybody. I am here with Jean Perpignan. Oh man, I, I got real nervous saying it even though I rehearsed it with you before we started <laughs> recording. Um, uh, Jean's a good friend of mine. We met at Cabo Press and immediately became friends, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think my my fondest memory, I'll let him talk in a minute. Uh, my fondest memory is, um, besides our affinity for, for photography gear, is uh, we got food poisoning and you, I was on the, I was on the end of it. I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like you were in the thick of it and you still came <laughs> to the workout that we were doing that morning. So, uh, on top of being a great general, just a generally good person, he is a champion among men. <laughs> John, how are you? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm literally crying out loud right now. Man. This, that was great. I forgot. I put that I put that memory away. I understand. And so for me to pull that back out of the cabinet <laughs> where I closed it up and locked it up is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I So I think there was like a handful of us, but I think mm -hmm. I was patient zero because mm -hmm. I got it after lunch and most people mm -hmm. got it after dinner. Oof. So by the time... I was done with it. Everybody else was just kind of getting started with it. Oh, man. <laughs> and it hit. Oh, boy, did it hit. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. But it was so fast. It was so funny how f kind of fast they went through. Because typically, that'd be something that you'd be down for like a good 24 hours. Because one of, somebody was down for 24 hours. They were they didn't make it. Yeah. This morning. Oh, they man. Didn't make it Who for was nothing. it? It was um, um, Jeremy Moore, right? I think it was Jeff. Maybe. Yeah, he was, I think he was down for, I know Chris, my roommate, Chris Teitzel, like he was down for the count for a while. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no, good. You're right. It was it was a it was a great opportunity for us to catch for us to meet. I should catch up. Yeah. It was a great opportunity for us to meet. And let me tell you, man, I I've been a fan of yours. You know, obviously since then, I know you you're the same with me. And um, I think that we've got a lifetime bond now, um, because of all, not just the conference itself, yeah. but definitely for that night. Yeah. Um, and, and <laughs> <laughs> no, that can't be. But yeah, man, that workout was bananas. Um, yeah, we gotta we gotta hit up Joy and uh, ask her if she still remembers that. I know for sure. Yeah, they were running it. I did um back when this pandemic started. Uh, I did like a virtual workout group with them. Um, but then like I I you know because of pandemic stuff, I kind of mm -hmm. I kind of fell off. But I uh, since the pandemic started, I've lost twenty five pounds, which is like insane. Nice because I don't feel like I've been trying that hard. Okay. I'm like, just That's all the scales up. tell me that. And like, my shirts fit better, but like, I'm like, I don't know. Hey, man, People are like, it. what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I have two children to chase around now uh, and I'm drinking that, more that. water. So I guess so, if you want to lose weight, have kids. If you're so a guy. That and the, yeah. and the water. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And the, yeah, that and the water. water. Yeah. I was going to say, if, if anybody's asking you what you're doing, it's pro I'm going to guess it's probably more women because for us as men, for some reason, it seems to be easier for us to lose weight, yeah. whereas women really have to work hard at it and be uh, so diligent about it. Yeah. And it's like, for us, it's like, yeah, just drink water for a week. And it's like 20 pounds. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. I'm like, my, yeah, my wife's like, uh, she like hates me a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, like, whatever <laughs> though. She's like, uh, she's like popping out kids and like mm -hmm. doing hard stuff. 
I don't, I don't know. She's like, I don't, she's like, she's I, saving lives. Yeah, exactly. She's like, she's like, I'm like, she's like, I'm the heaviest I've ever been or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't notice. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So. That's, yeah. Same here. Same yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because we're good husbands. I'm probably a bad That's husband right. for saying that on the air. So I'll have to, <laughs> I'll like bleep Enough. out, <laughs> I'll bleep out that <laughs> part. <laughs> Be like commercial edit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just right there. Pre-roll. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, well, we're here to talk about, um, so first of all, Jean is a strategy architect at Design Theory, and we're going to be talking about social media and content tr- distribution because I, w- I am bad at social media, I think, but I've been trying to be better. Um, and so I'm just really excited to get your take. But before we get into all of that, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Cool, man. Cool. Okay. So, um, wow, there's like so much and I'm going to try to condense it. Right. Um, it all started back with, uh, in the mid eighties with a Tandy 1000 from Radio Shack that my uh, parents got nice. that they didn't know how to use. And so I jumped in there and learned command line and learned how to, you know, uh, uh launch at uh, launch you know, applications that, you know, through DOS and whatnot. And then I just fell in love with computers all throughout. And technology was always a thing for me. I started my first business <clears throat> unknowingly fixing computers and building computers. And then that's how I, you know, kind of met my wife. And she uh, helped me to take that, you know, official. And, you know, and from there it was all great. And then all of a sudden Walmart started selling computers and I, I couldn't compete. Um, and then I started getting questions about web design. And then I was like, I'll, jump into it, self-taught, fell into WordPress, fell into the community, and then fell into a bigger community of developers and designers and, you know, creators and, and, and everything. And to where I am now, where I've had so many years working with different businesses, I never really niched down in, in my approach with anything that I did to any specific sector or industry. Everybody that, you know, that, that, that we've, you know, brought along the way as, as clients and customers have been through all different types of industries and walks of life. And so I got a chance to really learn a lot of what made people unique in their, in what they were bringing to their marketplace. And so I've turned that into what I call being a strategy architect, where I'm able to, you know, create and, you know, construct a strategy for people to be able to, you know, help their, help their business or help their brand, uh, see more, see more reach, um, you know, especially with using content and and different ways of using content, which I know we're going to talk about in a little bit, but, um, that's where I find more joy. You know, I still do photography and I love that. I still do that professionally, um, as one of the hats that I wear, um, you know, but this is something that, you know, I, I have a lot of passion about. And so that's where I'm at. Yeah. That's awesome. It sounds like we have very similar, uh, paths because it was kind of like that for me. You know, my dad brought home an IBM ThinkPad from work and I was messing around with it and real excited about it. And then we got our own, uh, first computer and I started fixing people's computers and burning mix CDs. Like that made me like a yes. hundred bucks a week for a while. It was Come really, on. it was good. Talk about it. That was good money. Um, allegedly, 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 <laughs> of course, for educational purposes. Um, right. But, uh, <laughs> but, and then same, I got into web design. I started charging, well, so I was fixing computers in college and I wanted to start charging people and like college kids have no money. So nobody wanted to do that. Um, so then I started getting into, you know, doing more website stuff and that was, I mean, I'm still pretty much doing it to this day along with the podcasting. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, awesome. Awesome. But I love, I love your pivot because, um, uh, Create and construct a strategy to help people see more reach. That is, I think, where I struggle the most. I'm a very field of dreams kind of guy. You know, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I learned in the last couple of years, thanks to Cabo Press. Uh, Also, let me just say, like, we talked about the food poisoning part of Cabo Press, but, like, that's a tiny little sliver of an amazing event where I've grown my business every time I've gone to it. So it was unfortunate and rare. Uh, So Mm -hmm. we'll just, yeah, I don't want everybody to think like every time you go to Cabo. No, no. It was one of my first, let me just say for me, it was one of my first, you know, if you call it like a a getaway mastermind. Yeah. uh, uh, And to the, 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 to have a conference in a pool, um, yeah. is, is something that, you know, as many times as Chris tries to explain it, it sounds crazy, but when you actually experience it, it's like, this is brilliant. 
Um, you know, you're able to let everything else go. You're able to focus. You're able to be around people who, you know, kind of like what we talked about, you know, before, you know, pre-show about, about, you know, about how Twitter was, where it's like, I can meet people that I might not have been able to actually get in the room with yep. and, and, and actually have a conversation with them, learn from them. And they're willing to help me. They're willing to see me, you know, see success or they're willing to give me the light bulb that I may have been stumbling on for the past year, two years, five years, um, or a new light bulb to something of where I should pivot to. And I, I just... It's nothing like it, man. I don't know. I, I don't know how he came up with it. I just, you know, all credit to him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've i gone every year for a few years and um, I would have applied, you know, pre-pandemic too, but my son, it was very close to the birth of my son. And, um, but yeah, as soon as I can go again, I will absolutely, because my, uh, I, my business has changed for the better thanks to it, so... This episode is brought to you by the Events Calendar. The original calendar for WordPress, this free plugin helps you with calendaring, ticketing, and more powerful tools to help you manage your events from start to finish. Whether you run school events, concerts at a venue, or fundraisers for nonprofits, the Events Calendar gives you the tools you need to make it your own. And with the Events Calendar Pro, you can create custom views, recurring events, add your own custom fields to events, and much more. Run virtual events? No problem. With the virtual events add-on, you can quickly and easily manage your online-only or hybrid events. With deep Zoom integration, custom virtual event coding for search engine optimization, and the ability to embed video feeds directly on your website, the events calendar makes putting virtual and hybrid events together easier. And I can't stress this one enough. Let me tell you, I have tried to roll my own webinar software, my own live stream event software, and it is difficult. And I have 20 years experience making websites. The events calendar is the tool that you need to make virtual events a lot easier. You can even sell tickets and only show the stream to ticket holders. If you run events, whether in person or online, you need the events calendar. Head on over to howibuilt.it slash events to learn more. That's howibuilt.it slash events to start running your events more efficiently today. Thanks so much to the events calendar for supporting the show. And now let's get back to it. Anyway, so I take a very field of dreams approach uh, up until the last couple of years. And I've been doing a lot of content over the last year, basically since the pandemic started. Um, I've been doing a lot of, of content and I'm starting to see kind of the, um, the, fruit, the fruit of those labors. Okay. Um, but I, I just kind of started recently connecting the dots and doing a strategy. Um, for it. And I, again, I don't know if it's good because you're in your own head and it's probably good to bounce mm -hmm. things off people, but um, tell me, tell me a little bit more about that. So if, if I came to you as a client, uh, what does that process look like for you? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, yeah. yeah, no, 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 you got it. You got it. Let me, let me, give me, give me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's a common question that I get, right? A lot of times we just don't, people just don't know where to start. Right. It was like, I have an idea but I don't even know if it's the right idea. I don't know if it's, you know, if it's, if it's the idea because I got it from somebody else, from my competitor, from, you know, a friend and they seem to be doing okay or doing well. Um, so, so yeah, that kind of question I get all the time. And really for me, it, it, it all comes down to, you know, to goals. What, what do you, what do you really want to see as a, as a goal at the end? Like what's going to make you happy at the end? And then how do we, be, and then we create, or, you know, we create the, 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 the steps and the milestones, the, the tasks tasks, the, all the granular things, you know, down from that to say, this is how we get there. And what I also try to do is realize, okay, is this a worthy goal? So for example, a lot of times people will say, oh, I just, I, I, I want to have, you know, more followers on social, or I want to have more visits to my website, or I want to have more sales to my, my website, or I want to get more customers that, that convert, right. Or visitors that convert and all of those great goals. All right. So let's pick one though. 
Because what we can't do is say, hey, let's let's tackle every single one of these things. It'll drive all of us crazy, right? And so what means more importantly to you? Like, is it is it is it the bottom line of getting your visitors to converting, to, 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 to converting? Is it more getting the visitors so that we have the opportunity to convert? Or is it, you know, just to get people that are already there to continue to buy more, come back? Or is there there, there's not enough people that know about you to become visitors, to then convert, to then buy. You know what I mean? So it's like all of those things, let's kind of talk through and let's be honest about it you know and that's you end up kind of being a little bit of a coach if you will and you're in their corner because it's like i want to be invested and so tell me more tell me how you're unique tell me what you bring what you offer tell me what's different about what you're offering is it because of the price is it because of your location is it because um you know your more your your products are more durable your services are more uh more unique whatever that it is let's 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 pull all that let's put it on the table all right cool now you have your you have your goal we've agreed on this goal Okay, now we have your 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 assets, and then let's let's see how we can position these um, so that way we can get to your goal. And that may be using you know podcasting to 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 get to your audience, and then or maybe I should say before I even say that now let's let's talk about where is your audience, who is your audience, right? Let's identify your avatar. We all hear the you know the, your avatar, your customer avatar, your profile. Da, da, da. This is it's important, and I hate that it's such a coined phrase now of, of saying that, but yeah. it's so important because you can't just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope that everything sticks and everybody's gonna love your spaghetti and pick it up yeah. and run with it. No, the stuff that you offer, products or services, whatever that it is, is should be as as niche as you possibly can, or it should be as siloed as you possibly could get it, so that way it'll it, when you when you talk about it and you present it to those people, it makes sense to them immediately. They're like, oh my gosh. This solves the challenge that I've been uh, I've been dealing with for the last year, five months. This just came up, whatever that it is. Um, this 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 product that I used to buy, they're no longer producing it, and now you're stepping in and you're producing it better, and you're be able to, you're gonna be able to continue. Fantastic. Now that makes sense to me. Instead of saying, "Hey, did you know that this is missing?" That it has nothing to do with me. I I don't even. I don't even I don't even shoot film anymore. So who cares that you're creating you know new <laughs> new new film projects and insta you know Instax is no longer gonna be around. I don't care. You know, um, it doesn't mean anything to me. But if you talk about it in a way and in an area of where people who are consuming content that they can appreciate that, it's gonna ring. And then they're gonna be able to come back to your landing page and then they're gonna see more information. And they're gonna be like, I need to get involved. How do I get involved? Oh, there's a mailing list. Great, I'm gonna sign up for that. And then there's drip campaigns. So then now I get I get more information that's giving me more and more. And it's like, well, then I need to, who do I need to talk to? I need to talk to somebody. Well, guess what? We have a phone number. Well, we do a live. We do a live every week. So before you even buy, guess what? We do a live every week. Come meet us. I do an AMA on, on Reddit or whatever. So like all of these things are just, you know, examples, but like those are the things that we have to kind of work through before we can actually get to, you know, success and defining what success is. I, God, I love that. I think that's so important. And you're right. Like ideal customer avatar, right? That's the thing that everybody says. Um, And it sounds like marketing mumbo jumbo, but it's not. You've got to know, even in my field of dreams example, right? If you build it, they will come. It was a specific thing. It was a baseball stadium, right? And they were baseball fans. It's not like you just Mm -hmm. like mowed down a whole field and like, come see my no right. longer field or whatever, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, swimmers didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and, and describing the, the problem when you know who you're talking to, right? Uh, cause again, how many times have you seen like a WordPress plugin that was like, this plugin uses React, right? Or like, and like, um, no one cares. No mm-hmm. one cares that it uses React. <laughs> I, I care that whatever, right? I care that I can. That that I don't need to build a membership portion of my site now because of this plugin. Um, the language it's written in, that's, you know, that's most people who buy a car don't care about the end. Like, I don't even, mm-hmm. what's the difference between four and, and six cylinders? No. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, yep, yep, yeah. I know. It's it's more like, hey, does it have Bluetooth? Does it have CarPlay? Yeah, exactly. Does yeah. it have CarPlay? Num- yeah. Fantastic. Number one. That's all I want. <laughs> We're buying a minivan this year. It's got to have uh-huh. CarPlay. It's got to be safe, mm-hmm. but it's got to have CarPlay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see? <laughs> see? <laughs> um, so, so this is great. So um, pick one goal. I think, again, that's like so, that's, that's yeah. like so important. That's really important um, uh, because... Again, if you if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to have a clear a clear path to get there. 
Yeah. Let me define that even further, yeah. right? So whether you're in business uh, with an organization, it's you and 10 people, you and 100 people, you by yourself, right? Um, you really have to have a heading on where you want to go. And and even for people who are who have been in business uh, with an organization, whether it's themselves, so many people, and a lot of times we get lost in it. You know, we 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 we're, we're for example, there's so many businesses that were out there that were focused solely on making sure that their restaurants were intact and they're they were offering new uh, plates every week or new breweries that were coming up with new recipes for 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 home you know for for uh, for their beers that were custom and craft you know and 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 focused on their their employees and maybe insurance and healthcare and things like that and then the pandemic comes and it's like no one was thinking about what it would look like if no one could come in the door for months. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? No yeah. one. You know what I mean? Like it just wasn't something to 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 prepare for. And that's a lot of, a, a lot of times that's what that's kind of what you need is someone to say, "Hey, can I pull holes in in what you're thinking about doing or even what you've been doing to say, "Hey, if someone if if 100 people showed up tomorrow, could you support them?" If uh if 3 of your of your top 5 sales people or developers left tomorrow, where would you be? Um, you know, what does that do to the goals that you set up that, you know, we're, we're in the roadmap for? And then it's like, it's like triage control too. And all of these are just things that they're in business and they happen, they happen to all of us at some point, it gives us an opportunity to learn, but you, you've got to have someone in your corner to kind of ha- you know, have these conversations. It can't just be, it's good when you have opportunities to be in networking events or in situations where you're in the room and someone says, oh my gosh, this happened to me. And then you stay back and you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought that that would happen. What if that happens to me? Yeah. And, you know, so so all of these are good things to, to, to think. And that's why it's, it's all part of strategy. Right. We won't get it all, but it is it are it is things that we have to try to mitigate for or think about and have a plan for so that we can, you know, gust off the book and be like, okay, page 73 <laughs> says this. All right, here's what we're going to do, folks. Yeah. You know? Yep. And and you're right, right? Because like there's there's that group think, right? Like everybody in the same industry kind of thinks the same way. Um, but you're sitting in that conf- at a networking event, and someone raises their hand and says, "Oh, this happened to me." And then you're like, "What if that happened to me?" No one had that opportunity at the beginning of the pandemic, right? Yeah. It all happened to everyone <laughs> at the same time, right? So I right. I think I think you're right. You need somebody to to help you work through. Um, you know, in, in it's big helpful. companies, it's, 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 what's it called? Risk assessment. Um, mm-hmm. and then you have like disaster recovery and, and, mm-hmm. um, it's weird to think about that as like a, a solo business owner, but right. you know, right. what you if, have to. what if I got COVID and I couldn't run my business for a month? I don't have a co-host for my podcast. Right. So, right. yeah. Right. That's the thing. We, we, we'd like to believe that things are within our control and so long as we're thinking about what we're thinking about, that's all that could possibly happen, right? Within yeah. the the cone of of error, yeah. right? That we put around ourselves. If you think about like dogs and yeah. you know, and like that's and and it's it's totally not your fault. It's just it's, I, for me, I feel like it's human nature. Yeah. But it also you know depends on how how open you are or how exposed you are to other people. And, and that's why I say, I go back to like my history where it's like, I've, I've, I've never really niched in my area. If you will, I've been around so many different people in so many different industries uh, and professions where it's like, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known this tidbit about, you know, what it is to be a singer or an opera singer, you know, in New York versus what it is to be an opera singer in Oklahoma or mm-hmm. a dentist in Tennessee or whatever, yeah, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I can go. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, and but I again I think you raise some some really good points there. And I, you know, we I think we all fall um we all fall into the fallacy of when things are good for me, they're always gonna be good for me, right? And mm-hmm. it's it you don't wanna think about what's gonna happen if it's bad, but that's why we have insurance, that's why we have backup mm-hmm. plans. That's so um mm-hmm. but uh okay, so Okay, so I've come to you. We've determined my goal. It's to get more people to sign up for my podcast membership, which, by the way, uh, Jean and I had a very, very good pre-show conversation. I suspect we'll have a good post-show conversation too. That will be available to members. You can sign up over at buildsomething.club for $5 a month. Um, so th- l- that's my goal. How how do we build that strategy now? And And more importantly, I guess, because right, this is about social media and content. Where does the content come into it? 
Yeah. So let's let's jump into that, right? Okay. So let's just okay. So let's let's use your example. So let's say podcasting. I want to you know grow my audience, grow my awareness, you know, with my podcast that you know that I've been so diligently working on and nurturing and contributing to and creating uh, content for. Okay. So now it's like uh, what what I would do is I would say okay. So of what types of topics do we talk about on this podcast? And then then it's like okay. Well, let's see who would be interested in those topics. Where do they where do they consume more information, right? So do they do Google searches for this? Do they read blog posts about this? Do they, uh, do, are they on other, do they, you know, consume other podcasts with other people that also speak about what you're doing? Because one of the things that I love doing, I'll use as a tactic to, to jump into, would be to say, hey, who else is talking about some of these things that has a bigger audience than you do? Because chances are, they're, they may be looking that podcast uh, host may be looking for someone um, to bounce some ideas off of, to have a conversation about a certain thing that is common in your industry. Now, ha- they approach them and say, hey, listen, I noticed that you haven't had, a, you haven't talked about this subject matter for our, you haven't talked, for example, I noticed that you haven't talked about how, and this is late, but how Spotify has been buying all these different uh, uh, podcasting companies like Gimlet and some of the others. And um, we're not seeing things come out of that. So, you know, what's happening to those companies? You know, how is that really playing out? You're not, you haven't really talked about it. I'd love to get on your show. I have some talking points. I'd love to get on your show and talk about it. This person Let's say it's Joe Rogan, um, one of the biggest you know guys out there, right? And he, Joe Rogan says, you know what, Joe, that's a fantastic idea. Why don't I have you on? I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Now, what happens is you get on the show. Joe has Joe Rogan has you know millions of of of, of, of listeners. You get exposed to all of those listeners as a subject matter, or as a, at least a subject matter expert on this minute point within this bigger macro space of podcasting and what the business is doing, what the, what's happening in the industry, things are changing. So now the questions that you bring up or the points that you bring up to Joe, again, he hasn't talked about it before, so it's new to him. And then you're someone who's new to the show. So that's great flavor. Now you get exposed or you get exposure from his massive audience um, to a degree where it's like, wow, now these people are going to start looking at you and say, we want to consume more of this. Joe has some really good, you know, uh, uh, insight on something that I'd never really thought about. I wonder what else he's talking about within this space. So now they jump over and they start to see, well, what's your catalog look like? Now, again, strategy wise and content wise, we want to make sure before you get on the show, obviously, because this is such a big one, you want to have some kind of backlog of things that you've talked about as well as things that you're about to talk about so that way when this comes out it, it falls in line now we've got like a series of stuff that you know people who are going to be interested they can consume this right and so they're great maybe we even tie that into some blog posts um, with some data maybe we tie that into some videos that you've done short videos that you've done you know maybe on instagram and things like that where people can reference and they can consume or maybe they catch it there then they get to you know the bigger podcast and then they get to your other ones maybe they because they didn't catch it before so so now it's like all of these areas where it's like, I've just talked about this one thing, but I've sparked an interest with people that probably wouldn't have been introduced to me in another way that now they can. And I've already got this funnel or this, this, uh, this, this, not a network, but like all of these content pieces around this that people can consume because they're going to be, they're going to be wanting it to get more of me. And now I've proven who, that, that I'm worth to, to talk about this thing and other things. Now I'm not saying that it's going to be out of, let's say, let's say 100,000 people that may be introduced to you, all 100,000 people are going to stay. But what if 1,000 did? That right. ratio is fantastic, right? Right. And then now the next thing is to say, you know, someone's going to say, well, I, how do I get to Joe Rogan? You don't have to get to Joe Rogan. You can get to somebody who has an audience of 100 or an audience of 1,000, you know, just so long as so that where it's like, hey, how can we, we're, we're, we're in the same space, how can we talk about this? Or maybe they're in a, they're in a associated space. Maybe they're not in podcasting, maybe they're in video, but their videos are also in podcasts or, or, or shared in another way or their content shared in another way. But what they're talking about is tech in particular. Well, that's fine. I talk about tech all the time. I'm, I'm a techie, right? So what if I get, on, uh, I get on with them and I talk about what's going on or I invite them on? Now they're going to talk about me because they're going to say, hey, I'm going to be on this show and da-da-da. Tune in, maybe it's a live, subscribe, da da da, and then their audience is going to want to consume. And so, like, we have all of these different ways to do it in that way. So, well, let, before I get into my segment, let me know what you think about that. Yeah. So, I mean, we just got a master class here, listeners. Um, I, I'm not even joking. Um, first of all, you described perfectly how to pitch yourself to other podcasts, right? Because people pitch them, well, people or their 
or their people pitch guests to me by saying, hey, I want to introduce you to this person. They're so great. You should have them on your show. And I'm like, why does this help my audience? Right. Um, so like, I noticed you're not talking about this. I think this would be good for your audience. Let me talk about this with you. Uh, perfect. And then this is where part of the strategy comes in, my friends. And this is what I think a lot of people, uh, a mistake a lot of people make before they go on podcasts. They don't have a clear call to action and they don't have anything ready. Anytime I go on a podcast, I always have go to casabona.org slash name of the host. On that page, I've got the offer or whatever or related content. Um, and and Jean takes it even a step further than that. Make sure to have that related content. Backfill it a little bit. Get ready. Be prepped. Because you're getting in front of an audience that's not yours. And you want those people to stick around. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about it this way, right? Um, and I, I, remind me to get back to episodic yeah. uh, content. I, I want to. I want to get into that. But if you think about it this way, how many times have we got introduced to a trailer where it's like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't know this was coming out." It's got maybe one or two actors in it that I that I or actresses and actors that I know that I, I know about, and I didn't think that they would play some kind of role. And so you see this trailer, and it's like, oh, "When is this coming out?" And you, you're excited about it. Then you start to you know research a little bit, like, "Well, who's the director? And then uh, who's the studio? And you know, what platform is it going to come out on? Because yeah. they're doing you know it's all streaming now. Yep. So what platform is it? okay? I have that. Well, then I don't have that. Maybe I need to sign up because I definitely need to see this. And like all of this stuff happens. Um, you know, not to say that they're not prepared for this, the studios are prepared for it, but this is what the consumer does, right? And so same thing with a product. It's like, oh, this is going to fix, if there's a way for me to for me to fold, if there's a machine that was out there that would fold my uh, fitted sheets, I think it's the fitted sheets, right? Yeah. The sheets that go on, the, on yes. the bottom. And it would do it for me without me having to get all messed up or whatever, I would buy that in a heartbeat. And I would also say, well, why is this out? Where is it? Can I go to the store and go get it right now? Do I have to order it online? Which site can I get it from? Can I get it from Amazon? Can I get it in two days? Can I get it tomorrow? Can I pay the extra, you know, 35, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I would do all of these different things to get this in my hands because it serves a purpose for me that I didn't realize that this, someone was addressing. And now that you addressed it, I want, tell me more. Tell me where, tell me how. Don't leave me hanging. Because now if you left me hanging, it leaves me a bad taste in my mouth. And if I ever see you again, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you. Oh, man, that's (laughs) such a great point, right? It's like, what if you had this? All right, bye. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. It's like what? Like what? Like, I open want the door it. and close what it. Do you mean? Like, what? Yep. Yeah. And I'll just I'll just tell you, I'll take it one step before that. I buy a specific brand of sheets because they have a label that says this is the bottom left corner of the fitted sheet. I'm like, that's all I want. I want to know. I don't want to have to rotate it. And we have a king size bed. I don't want to rotate that a million times. So see, I didn't even know they had that. See, yeah. I'm learning. Yeah, right. The, the <laughs> sheets and giggles. Very comfortable. It's like sleeping is this, in. Is that the name? Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Sheets and giggles. They sponsor the, oh, sponsor so my podcast, please. Um, I'm so mad at that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great name. It's like eucalyptus sheets. They're not hashtag not a sponsor, but they should be. Um, it's like sleeping in lotion. It's it's like uh, it's so good, and they have a label in the bottom left that says this is the bottom left or whatever it says, right? Like bottom left corner, winky face. I'm literally writing yeah. that down. Winky face, because we know that no one really knows what the bottom left corner of the sheet is. (laughs) No. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. So let me tell you, uh, and that was really more for me. I hope your listeners enjoyed that too, but that wasn't really for me. Um, (laughs) Let me me talk really quickly about episodic. Yeah. Um, And and you could use episodic in in written form, video form, audio form. It doesn't really matter. Episodic, Um, just to stop you right there, that is like... mm -hmm. Pieces of discrete content, right? Where serial is like right. a series. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And and that's what I was going to bring it down to. Cool. So if we think about our favorite TV shows, yeah. um, we know what time they come on. We know that depending on what network it's on, we're going to get 12 episodes, 24 episodes. We're going to get 10 episodes. We know exactly what to expect. We know what time it's going to come on. We know what date uh, of the week it's going to come on. Heck, there's been times that I used to run home to make sure that I was home in time to watch something live because I wanted to live tweet it or live whatever with it or see it. So that way, as there was being talked about, I was ready, right? And so when we think about our content distribution, whatever that it is, like I said, written, audio, whatever, um, there's a lot of, there's a really good opportunity, especially with the pandemic and how we're all seeking. There's a void with 
traditional media creating content in the way that we're used to it, um, especially with releases, whether it's from shows and movies, where creators like you, you know, are filling the void by putting out content in, a, in, in, in areas where people are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was out here. Like so many people are in the podcast now where they didn't know that it's been around for decades. And it's like, it's fine. It's fine. We've been here. No worries. <laughs> Glad you joined. But now that you're Welcome. here, yeah. like and subscribe, right? Welcome. But, you know, so, so, so creating episodic content is, is a really good way to, to introduce yourself um, to an audience, whether they're brand new, whether they're, you know, uh, uh, wouldn't have, have seen you or they're introduced to you from somebody else's referral, it doesn't matter. And the way that you do it is this. Say you have a topic and maybe the topic is, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, how to how to clean your car the right way without using uh, harmful chemicals. I don't know. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. And. You, you can give, like, we're going to go through this step by step, how you clean this, how, this is how, this is what you're going to use to clean the cha- uh, the, the seats, then this is how you clean the floors, this is how you do the vents, then this next episode is going to be the trunk, the last, you know, the next episode is going to be the, 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 the wheel wells and the, and, 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 the, and the rims and the tires, whatever, whatever. And so it's like every week you're going to get something more to the overall thing, which is the car and making sure that your car is nice and kept and whatever. But throughout the process, I'm going to give you a really in-depth way of how to do this step-by-step so that we get the same results. And maybe even at the beginning, I might do something where we've seen shows where it's like, I'm going to give you the end. And then I'm going to take you through how I got to the end, right? And so it's like, oh my gosh, yes, I see how you did it. How did you do it? I need to see it. So I need to see the next one. And I need to see the next one. And then what happens is, is that because we're going to release this you know, in an episodic form, you know, on this date. And, and, and let me take it even bigger than that. Maybe I'm going to give you teasers for the next episode through my Instagram stories that aren't going to, they aren't going to only going to see for, they're only going to last you for so long. So you have to be following me and you have to know that I'm going to drop this on Tuesdays at, you know, 1253 and not at one or not at four. And if you, if you don't get on between the next 24 hours, you miss it. And people are going to be talking about it. There's going to be comments and da, 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 da. Right. And then maybe my next teaser is going to be, you know, before the next week or my next teaser is going to be on, I don't know, on TikTok. And then I'm going to show you behind the scenes or something else. And like all of these different aspects of the thing. I'm still talking about the same thing, but now I'm using all these other areas to not only to spark interest, but also to engage with my, with, with my uh, viewers in areas that they're already, that they're already familiar with. Right. Yes, it takes time. And we can talk about how much time it's going to take and how much effort and, and what you're going to need and resources and people or whatever. But at the very, very le- least, I can tell you that. And what I know we're going to talk about TikTok in, you know, at some point, but um, I'm seeing people create stuff on Instagram, on TikTok, and obviously, you know, Facebook with just their phones with, and it, and it works, you know, and it's, you know, they're catching virality or they're catching, you know, thousands of impressions and views. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be, you know, the lights and the studio lights and, and the, 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 the mics and all this other stuff. It just needs to be something that is engaging. It needs to be something that speaks to your audience in a way that they understand and then put it in something to where they can expect it. Even if you're doing seasons, oh, I'm going to do this series for, you know, for 12 weeks and then I'm going to take a break. And then, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, for, for six weeks and come back for the winter season. Uh, all of those are just ways that you can captivate people. They talk about you. They're going to share it. They're going to talk about it. They might even you know, come up with their own concepts for like, oh, I see why they did it this way. And then they'll dissect it themselves. And then before you know it, you created a Facebook group and they're in your Facebook group as a, as a, as a fan. And they're having conversations about how the next season should go uh, or the next series of things should go or whatever, whatever. You're not even there. You're just, you know, liking stuff and just smiling or whatever. And it's like they're having this whole thing because they're now fans and they've come to expect the way that you've delivered content in all these different ways and, 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 and they love it. Um, and there's a way to monetize that. And we can talk about that, but nonetheless, just the, the thing is, is put the content out there for people to be able to consume it in the way that they, they, that they, that they enjoy. God, I love that. I love that P- people. We are, I, we're getting such great advice and we've been talking for a long time and we are coming up on time. Um, but, uh, put the content out there. It just needs to be engaging, right? Um, yes. There was a, today as we record this, um, you know, Chris Lama put out a post about, um, he's like, he, he's been mentioned three times on the show. He's about to show up. Um, <laughs> about the best thing that you can do for your video is good audio, right? And I piggybacked on that. I said, yeah. you don't need 4K video, right? I'm the sucker who has a 4K camera because I'm into it. 
But you don't need that to create engaging content. You need a phone and just good content. Um, and so, I, man, what you're, what you're saying is absolutely right. This episode is brought to you by Text Expander. In our fast-paced world, things change constantly, and errors in messaging often have significant consequences. With Text Expander, you can save time by converting any text you type into a keyboard shortcut called a snippet. Say goodbye to repetitive text entry, spelling, and message errors, and trying to remember the right thing to say. When you use Text Expander, you can say the right thing in just a few keystrokes. Text Expander lets you make new approved messaging available to every team member instantly with just a few keystrokes, ensuring your team remains consistent, current, and accurate. Text Expander can also be used in any platform, any app, and anywhere you type. So take back your time and increase your productivity. But that's not all it does. With its advanced snippets, you can create fill-ins, pop-up fields, and more. You can even use JavaScript or AppleScript. I can type out full instructions for my podcast editor, hi Joel, in just a few keystrokes. Another one of my favorite and most used snippets is PPT. This will take whatever text I have on my clipboard and convert it into plain text. No more fighting formatting if I'm copying from Word or any place else. Last month, I saved over two hours in typing alone. That doesn't even take into the account the time I saved by not having to search for the right link, text, address, or number. You have no idea how many times I want to type out a link to a blog post or an affiliate link and I can't remember it and then I have to go searching for it. That generally takes minutes, but since I have a text expander snippet, it takes seconds. Text Expander is available on Mac OS, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. I've been using it a lot more on my iPhone lately because I've been working from my iPhone more uh, because there are days when I'm just not in front of my computer right now. If you've been curious about trying Text Expander or simple automation in general, now's the time. Listeners can get 20% off their first year. Just visit textexpander.com slash podcast and let them know that I sent you. Thanks so much to Text Expander for sponsoring the show. And now let's get back to it. Now, uh, you teased TikTok. I do want to talk a little bit about social networks. Um, yes. And so let's let's have a quick chat about that. And then let's give our listeners like a one, two, three. Here's how you get started with, with a sure. good content strategy. Sound good? Sure, All sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I will, I will be honest. I know that TikTok's been around for a little while. I just really got into it, um, I'd say about a month ago. I, I went ahead and created my profile just as a placeholder. Mm-hmm. Months ago, right? right? Um, and then, you know, I had a couple people follow, followed like some people that I core knew, yeah. but that's about it. Like maybe, you know, if you looked up my thing, it's probably like five people. But the reason why I got in about a month ago is I saw saw a video. It was really funny. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. My daughter's been on there. She creates these dances. I thought it was all about dances and music and that. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I am, I'm too old to be doing these little right. dances that the, that the kids are doing. But yeah. anyway, yeah. So your, so your New York accent there. just came out like really hard there for a minute, just, by the way. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. You got it, right? Thank yeah, you. I'm from New York too, um, so I heard it immediately. But. <laughs> for sure. Listen, we were both wearing New York hats when we were at Capitol. That's so, right, that's right. Another reference, I know. <laughs> okay, so, um, so, so the cool thing about what's happening in TikTok is that it's not, it, there's so much more. I know that a lot of the times we've seen like the headlines or the the, the things that that bubble up to, you know, to the other networks is like the dancing and the music and things like that. There are some comedians that are on there that are creating content that is just fantastic. There are people that are on there that are creating solutions for how to do everyday things and they're catching virality. There are people that are on there talking about stocks and finances and crypto um, and they're doing fantastic. And they're all doing it within a short under, what is it, a minute or something, under a minute worth of time. Um and in some cases, some of them are doing it even episodically to where it's like, I can't wait for them to put out another one. And the way that the algorithm is kind of giving you these things, if you were to get into it and just the one thing, let me step all the way back for a second and say that for your content, and we'll talk about this to wrap up, but for your content strategy to work, there needs to be consistency, bar none. 
Now, a lot of the people that are really successful on here are doing, they're creating consistent content on this platform. And what's happening is, is that the more that they are consistent, the more that their content is being pushed to more and more viewers. The way that algorithm works with TikTok is a little different than how it is on Facebook and Twitter and, and, and Instagram, especially to where it's like, you literally could see five posts from maybe uh, people that have like 1 million uh, likes or, or so many million uh, viewers. And then all of a sudden see a post from somebody who has three three likes on it or five likes on it. It's like, how did I, I didn't ask for this. How did I get this? The way that that it's picking you. Anyway, so anyway, highly recommend that everybody get in there because the space, the land grab is still available even today for you to jump into. It's not something that you should feel, you know, that you have to be super polished for or that you have to um, come up with. Just just get out there and experiment. A lot of times just creating those initial ones to kind of find yourself. I would say do like a hundred before you figure out, you know, where it is that you want to go with it. You know, those first 10 that you're going to do are probably going to be, you know, horrible. They're probably going to be, you know, poor or whatever. That's fine. Stay in there. Create your first hundred. After about a hundred of them, I'm sure that you're going to find a groove and like, okay, I like this style of doing it in this, you know, at this desk or outside or whatever that it is. And you'll really start to see success. But then at the same time, like I say, uh, um, 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 get consistent with it. Um, there still is, like I said, there still is a land grab. There's um, the opportunity for you to grow your audience on that platform. <sighs> still very much alive. Oh, wow. That's, that's great. And you know what? I, uh, you know, I think I said this in the pre-show. I used it for like 10 minutes and like totally lost track of time and was like, I got to get rid of it. But um, you make a strong argument, right? There's lots of niches out there and niches, however it's said. Um, and I've been doing, you know, YouTube shorts. Have you seen the YouTube shorts? I have. I have. Yeah. And I think that that's like their, their answer. Yeah. To that's their answer, answer to TikTok. Yeah. yeah. So I already mm-hmm. have a bunch of content, right? And I think the content's good. It does, I mean, it does really well on Reels. I don't understand Instagram Reels. It's so frustrating because yep. I am, like my Reels get like 2,000 views or whatever, which is way more than the rest of my content. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know how to take advantage of this at all. <laughs> it's just like yeah. theoretical uh, dollars, like South Park style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I will tell you that Unfortunately, it's it's really more of the machine, of mm-hmm. the Facebook machine. Yeah. It's a newer product that they've released and it was they released it because of how good TikTok was doing. And so they prioritized it. Yeah. So the more that you if you remember when Facebook Live came out, as soon as you went on live, they pushed your they pushed a notification to everybody that was following you. And they were prioritizing that content because they wanted people to adopt it. They want people to use it more and spend more time on the site, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So that's what's happening there. And there, I would say. If at all possible, with your reels, if you can lead people to where they can consume more Mm -hmm. as a call to action, do that. Not do it all the time. Right. Definitely not. Maybe more of a 20% over 80-20. Okay. You know what I mean? Where it's like, so hey, they're not you know, like I, sold to. You, they don't I, feel like they're being exactly. sold to. Yeah. For those of you that are out there that are enjoying these, you know, I see you and I really appreciate you engaging. Thank you so much. By the way, I have longer content or I have more content about these things over here on YouTube or on my website or whatever that it is, or, you know, subscribe, whatever, whatever that you want them to do, um, that they can take another step to get closer to you or get, excuse me, get more of you 20% of the time that you're out there, do that. And, um, give them the opportunity because a lot of times, and this is, man, this is something I learned from Chris and he's got to be on here. Yeah. Where Um, is he? (laughs) Give them the opportunity. Yeah. Give them the opportunity. If we don't give them the opportunity, we're, we're stuck trying to figure out or trying to guess why they haven't taken the next step. Give them the step. Don't bombard them with it, but give them the step, you know, nurturingly. And again, those that are on there that are consuming your content, especially in that, in that platform, in that way, they enjoy it. Right. And they enjoy that. In 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 of what it is, but there's gonna be, let's say if it's a thousand, if you got ten of those to then step out sorry, of that, and, I and sorry Siri, if you got ten of those to step out of that, and then you know subscribe to you know to your Patreon, or subscribe to you know something of, of a more offering, chances are if you gave them the opportunity to do it that they didn't know, they would probably do it and be like, yeah, this is great. Now I feel closer to you. I get a little bit more of exclusivity with you, and people love that. This episode is brought to you by Linode. Visit linode.com slash how I built it and see why Linode has been voted the top infrastructure as a service provider by both G2 and Trust Radius. From their award-winning support offered 24-7, 365 to every level of user, 
to ease of use and setup. It's clear why developers have been trusting Linode for projects both big and small since 2003. One of my favorite use cases for Linode is I was able to spin up a virtual server for my iPad. So I set up a server on Linode, I set up my development environment on my iPad, and I was able to push code easily to my Linode server so that I could do development from my iPad while I was on the road without a laptop. Deploy your entire application stack with Linode's one-click app marketplace or build it all from scratch to manage everything yourself with supported centralized tools like Terraform. Linode offers the best price-to-performance value for all compute instances, including GPUs, as well as block storage, Kubernetes, and their upcoming bare metal release. Linode makes cloud computing fast, simple, and affordable allowing you to focus on your projects, not your infrastructure. This is the perfect and affordable solution for managing lots of client websites from a single host, especially if you use your own tools or your own setup for maintenance packages. Visit linode.com slash how I built it. Create a free account with Google, GitHub, or your email address, and you'll get $100 in credit. That's linode.com, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash how I built it and sign up to get $100 in credit. People have been listening. They, I assume they love what you're saying as much as I do. Uh, let's talk about two or three things that people can do to get started with their own content strategy. Yeah. So here's what I would say. If you're just getting started, try everything. Try everything 10 times. Um, and the reason why I say that is because if you try it once, you're going to, you, you, your, your chances are you're probably not going to like it. And then you're going to base your not liking it on the whole thing, maybe the whole platform, the whole medium, the whole whatever. And you're going to write it all the way off. And then you're going to try something else. And chances are you're not going to like it. There. Try anything, try it all. Uh, and when I say it all, like if you're going to do video, try, try, you know, a 15 minute something. Maybe it's pre recorded instead of live. Or maybe try a 15 minute live and see how that works for you. Now, I like doing the lives more um, because there's less preparation. It's it's it is what it is, and I don't have to worry about going back to do any post editing, uh, pre rolls, and you know mid rolls or anything like that. Bumpers. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just getting on, hitting record, and I'm going on live. Or I'm talking about what I'm talking about till I'm done. Um, there's not opportunities for me to you know cut, paste, cut, and bring on or whatever restart. Mm. But what I say is try these because if you do them for at least 10 times, it'll give you some inkling to say, okay, I'm getting the hang of this, or I could see me, I could see where I could be better, or I could see where I like this over doing maybe just audio only, or maybe just doing, you know, a video on this platform only, or I like doing longer form video, or maybe after I've done 10 at 15 minutes or 10 at 20 minutes, I'm really, as I did, the t as I got to close to the ninth and the 10th or the eighth, ninth and 10th, I was able to convey my points and subjects um, with, in with in emphasis and uh, 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 how do you say, not, author not just authority, but like with effectiveness mm -hmm. um, in maybe five minutes. Maybe it's just a five minute thing. And maybe I call it, you know, five minute breakdowns. And then that's the thing. It's five minute Fridays. Boom. You know, um, Love it. now I know. And I've learned that when I, when I first got started, I didn't know what it was going to be. I just called it whatever. And then now that I've done it so many times, I've kind of wiggled my way into something where I really like, but I've tried all these other things. So now when I, I don't get, I, I, the less chances for me to get, you know, what is it, shiny object syndrome? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, oh yeah, that they're doing really well over there. I'm seeing these ads about really doing good on whatever platform. I should go over there. I've been over here, but forget this. I'm gonna go over there. No, I've tried all that. It, that I tried it, didn't really like it, but this I like, I can see me growing. I can see where I can start to, you know, maybe get some used equipment to do better, or I can see where I need to position my room or my desk or my phone and get a camera, borrow one, whatever that it is. And then now I'm good. Now, once you've got that set, then it's just a matter of, um, I would say, repurposing that content in any way that you possibly can, especially if it's video. So if it's a five-minute segment, you know, you can maybe cut that down to 30-minute segments, use it on Reels, use it on LinkedIn, use it on Twitter. You know, you can cut those, 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 those sound bites out 
um, or if it's video bites out, if you will, and then put them in those areas. Maybe you do a set, maybe you pull out some sound bites, put them together as a, as, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, how do you say, um, in succession. And then that ends up being like a quick little podcast. Oh, it's a yeah. quick little hit, right? What is um, that called? Word I'm looking for. A compilation. Yeah. Compilation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like monologue, but that's not it. It's a compilation. So yeah. maybe you put a compilation. So like it's a it's a weekly compilation that uh, compilation that gets sent out as a podcast. Boom, it gets sent out. Boom, and then maybe you use that in your emails and say, hey, by the way, here's what's going on. But then if you didn't, if you missed it, here's the here's the here's the quick hits. You can listen to it on the go. Doom, you know. Um, so all of those are just different ways. But now once you do whatever that you choose, um, spend a lot of time in your um, in analytics. Write down and document. What's going on? What's working? What's not working? Because there's so many times that we get into things and we think that, you know, and, and at the very beginning, and I would say for your first hundred of anything, you're, you're not going to see much traction. You see a little bit, but you're not going to see much. Nonetheless, document, because what you want to see is how do people react to this thing that I talked about versus how did people react to this? And if people reacted to this subject a little bit better than the others, maybe I should talk about this a little bit more. Maybe I got two comments instead of no comments. And maybe those comments that I got were, you know, were so constructed where it's like, maybe if I talk about this a little bit more, do I get more? Um, or did I share this in this platform? And because I shared this in this platform, I did a lot better there in terms of engagement, in terms of reactions, in terms of uh, likes and things like that. All of those are things that you have to document. Create a spreadsheet. Don't do anything complicated. Just create a couple rows. Each row is a different platform or a different medium or whatever. And then that way, at the end of it, you can easily tabulate and say, here's what's working. And then now that you've got all of that and you're documenting things, now you can say, okay, so if I did this every week, every day, every month, so many times or once a day, and it took me this long to do it, I can build this into my content strategy or my content delivery strategy. And now that I've done that, or maybe I'm going to do it only to this degree to, I'm just going to put this out on this platform. Then after three months, I will have enough, maybe an ad revenue or in whatever, whatever, to then hire a virtual assistant. That virtual assistant can then take this and then they can, or they can use otter.org was it otter.io and they'll transcribe it for me and then they'll put it into a blog post and that goes out. Or maybe they'll transcribe it for me and then put it into captions and then that goes out into something to where you can consume it without the video on because we all know that more video gets you gets watched without the sound on because of captions um, than not because people are at work or they're in the car or whatever, whatever. Um, so maybe I use that and then that's a process I, 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 I outsource. Um, and then now I can kind of watch those things and I can continue just doing, creating the content and not so much on all the ancillary things because now I've got a process for how those are disseminated and being used and, and ultimately bringing people back to the main, which is maybe my website or my whatever, to or whatever that the platform you want them to come back to, to then subscribe and pay or whatever that it is you want them to do. Does that make sense? You gave me so many ideas. Uh, and you know what? In in build something more in the post show. The post show will be short because the pre-show was long and this is this is there's a lot to unpack here. Um, but in the post show, I will share with you how I am able to repurpose my YouTube shorts for Instagram Reels. Um, but I think I'm going to have to send those shorts over to TikTok too now. But I, again, I try everything 10 times. See what you like and what works for you. Repurpose your content. Spend time in analytics. Once you do that, you can create your content delivery uh, strategy. Sean, there's yeah. one more thing I need to ask you, and I ask everybody yeah. this. Do you have any trade secrets for us? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, please don't try to recreate the wheel when it comes to finding assets for your content. Um, there are websites out there. There's a lot of free ones like, uh, Pexels. Um, I think Pexels does like, uh, royalty free images that you can download and use for free with contributions, um, to, uh, the creators. And they also have video content. Some of them, uh, and I have some others, but there are areas out there and I'll send you the links. You can add it to the show notes, Perfect. right? So that way people can, can catch it after. Um, but there are, um, there's one site that I use called, uh, it's, it's from Envato, it's called Elements. And for 19 bucks a month, they've got PowerPoint assets, keynote assets, 4K video assets, uh, uh, assets for, 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 um, not, uh, uh, for Final Cut and for uh, Premiere, um, for they, you could do your own intros and outros and all types of con you know uh, transitions. Nice. They've got you royalty free music that you could use for your for your for your for your intros and outros or whatever. They've got all the stuff for like twenty bucks a month. Now, 
it saves so much time and effort. And I'm not saying that you can't create on your own. By all means, if you have the time to do it, do it and then, you know, whatever. But if you don't, go to one of these sites, get a subscription. Some of them are free. Some of them are minimal subscription. Go do that. It'll save you so much time and effort. And then it, the barrier for you to create content won't be where it's like, oh, but I need to, now I need to, you know, learn how to do this. And I've got to learn how to do this. And I've got to learn. I don't, I just want to put it. No. Come up with your content, create it and put it out there. Use these other things that are already created to then add to it. But at the very least, like I said, grab your phone, talk to it, do a talking head um, or talking voice, and then put it out there consistently. I love that. On that same token, I will just mention um, Envato Element sounds great. I use Design Pickle as well. I'm not a graphic designer, but I have a lot of custom graphics. Price is a different price. It's it's like four, 500 bucks a month. But you basically get a dedicated graphic designer. And so my graphic designer saves me hours every month creating uh, podcast graphics, YouTube graphics, artwork for my uh, for all sorts of things. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's, the, there's a good value prop there because I would spend mm-hmm. an hour trying to figure out Affinity Designer and then trying to design something that won't look as good. Whereas... My right. designer knows how to use that stuff, and he makes exactly. it look good and makes it editable. So that's awesome. I've never heard about that. Oh, Design so Pickle? Good. Use my affiliate link. <laughs> Please put that in the show notes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, I should say everything will be uh, in the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash 226. Uh, and uh, Jean, always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, it's been what? far Please too long. Please invite me back. A hundred percent. We're going to make this like a quarterly thing. Um, good. If people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at well, the ad symbol at JP Design Theory on just about everything. Um, obviously, my website at jpdesigntheory.com. Um, catch me on on LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm trying to be more active again on Twitter, but uh, you definitely catch me there. And um, if you have any further questions, uh, we do have a Facebook group called uh, The Hero Academy. Uh, you can, it's free to join. You can join us there, and uh, you know, love to love to chat with you. Awesome. Again, I will link everything, uh, all of that and everything over at howibuilt.it slash 226. In the pre-show, we talked about parenting at length and it was incredible. It was like a real, it was real talk with with Jean and Joe. Uh, And in the post-show, I'm going to tell you how I repurpose content. I'm also going to ask Jean about how I pronounced his last name because of my Italian-ness. So if you are interested in that, you can head over to buildsomething.club and sign up for five bucks a month. Thanks so much to this episode's sponsors. They are Linode, the events calendar, and Text Expander. Sean, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, man, are you kidding me? It was a blast. We do. We definitely got to do this again. <laughs> for sure. Thank you for listening. And until next time, get out there and build something. <laughs>